Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I'll be taking a look at issues 8 and 9 of Mike Centeno's comic Futile. These are the only two I could get a hold of, which is a bit of the bummer because I really, really liked both of these. But luckily, as this one says, there's no previous reading necessary. I don't know if that's the case for issue number eight, if this is an extension of something else, but it didn't seem like it. My guess is that each issue of Futile is a self-contained story, but I don't know. I would Either way, I would really love to see the early issues because I really, really enjoyed this. So this issue here, issue nine, is called landslide and you get some friends out on a trip they're coming up <laughs> into the south and they're seeing immediately that the, there's like this every life matters abortion is sin signs and then right off that it's like the uh you know the the porn box store that was uh something that really tripped me out because since i always grew up in california and you would never really see this kind of sign too much. And never anywhere can I think in California that I saw a porn store just off the side of the road. That, that Never in all my travels around California. And that tripped me out when I left California as I got into the Bible about how many pornography stores and stuff I saw. So I, I really like that. That seems like a really well-observed thing. But yeah, you have these friends here. They're going out to basically take a hike together and, you know, check out. They're checking out for the weekend or the week or whatever. Earlier, they had taken some uh, psychedelics. And I really like this turn here where the character, like, he's playing. He's hooked in on these mushrooms and really jamming out and then gets sucked into this swamp. But you get the sense that it's, uh, you know, the psychedelics kicking in. And then the issue flips into color. It's not just black with that spot blue. So you get this, like, really well-illustrated trippy sequence uh, leading up to, I think, some really fantastic, you know, phallic mushroom imagery here. And then getting the character coming back down and people being like, man, you're really into that song. So nice self-contained little like slice of life story with some really interesting, like more expressive, surreal, psychedelic art. Uh, but yeah, really like that. It, it, you know, it's a really interesting story, but even more, I liked issue uh, number eight. Issue number eight's like what I'm really looking forward to in comics right now. It's the kind of story I want. So it just fits my personal taste. They're both really, really well done. But in this one called The Future, Mike Centeno tells what I think is a very like mature story. And I don't mean in terms of like mature content. It's just, you know, a story that's a little bit more about things that adults go through rather than what kids go through or the fuck around weekend where the adults act like kids again. So you have the, this main character here, Alberto. He's an academic. I, I believe that this is set in Colombia. And I guess because of the title of the story, it's set a little bit in the future. I'm not sure. I really like this scene here where they're coming out of somewhere and th this is the guy who's been looking after his car he hands him some cash as a tip and the guy starts complaining then here his colleague says never forget beto education requires patience knowledge has a way to ripple through time in ways we can't control the future is unknowable best we can do is try to recreate waves strong enough to create sustainable currents of curiosity everything else is out of our hands I will miss our conversations dearly. Have fun at your in-laws apartment and give my best to Corolla. And then here the guy keeps like harassing him. But how about PayPal, Zelle, you know, like don't give me cash. That's not worth anything. And then this character says stinking oligarch pricks. And I really like that whole interaction because these are people who in their academic career are promoting revolutionary ideas and things like that. They're They're taking on like the battle of the common man but they're doing it behind their academically secure job and then this guy here is you know calling them oligarchs so i think that's interesting that's a dynamic that definitely plays out a lot in academia but it gets to the core of the story as well which is this guy is thinking about uh, taking a job somewhere else and moving his family and that's the kind of adult thing that's really interesting this scene here is really interesting as well it's something that as an academic, as a professor, you're in the public eye, and so you become a public figure. And that's hard to remember a lot of the times because you're just going about your life. Especially like me, I live in a smaller town, so 
uh, you know, I run into my students out places and if I get pissed off on the road, I have to remember like it could be a student or a coworker or somebody. Uh, but this guy, Alberto, he's out at the beach and this, this young attractive gal comes up to him and is, is basically like, Oh, do you remember me? And he's like, Oh, you know, and you can tell he's kind of getting nervous. Like his wife and kid are there and he, this young girl seems to be flirting with him. And he's just kind of asking, like she's saying, Oh, you influenced me so much. And this kinds of things that like, if you do your job, well, will happen. People come up to you and thank you, you know, and it's, you're struggling to remember who they are. And she, he's just kind of asking like, Oh, wow, congratulations. Like uh, you're a writer, huh? Like, have, have you done anything I would know about? And she basically tells him that she's writing adult sort of entertainment. And given that she's like a sexy young thing, <laughs> he's in, she's being real positive to him. He's like freaking out extra. Oh, no, I didn't think about that. And uh, you, you get the sense that maybe this is something that's going to develop later in the book. Like he's going to be tempted into an affair with her or something. But it's not. It's just kind of a throwaway scene. And then at the end of it, he's like, oh, I really worked up a sweat. And he has to go cool off in the ocean. Um, and I like that, that Mike Centeno didn't turn that into a more lurid plot point or something. It's just the kind of thing, the kind of situation you'll encounter. And then the guy does the right thing and moves on from it. Was, again, that really like kind of nice adult writing. It never gets into that total melodrama. Here you see kind of just the terrible situation of the town they're living in where he witnesses a kidnapping. And that incentivizes him to think, OK, I'm going to take this other job and and move and so that's pretty much what the story is about just this little sl slice of life this adult situation of like um should we move should we not what's good best for our kids what's best for my career what's best for the family uh but told in a really interesting compelling way with some really nice writing there's also in the back here some stuff that i think is really really interesting obviously Mike Centeno is, uh, he's saying, I mean, what the hell do I know at this point? Who the fuck am I to talk about the plight of the Venezuelan people from far away? Because he, he has moved now, it seems like. But the more I revisited it, the more I needed to remind myself that there's absolutely no right way of doing this. I can't keep trying to silence myself out of fear of what anyone else may have to say. My perspective is all I have. And I'm more than happy to be wrong, but only through sharing it with you all will I truly be able to test my beliefs. And I like that idea of someone who's aware of the political pressures to not tell the type of story they're telling, but also being like, hey, this is a story that means a lot to me. I'm going to tell it and that's going to open up conversation and I can learn from it. I think that's really healthy. And then he goes on to say, I can certainly say I don't know anything. I'm definitely not an expert and you won't catch me trying to pretend otherwise. In my infinite curiosity and faith in our species, I am certainly happy to take a back seat to those more confident and louder than me. But when I hear myself say that, I realize I'm reprising the mistakes of those who came before me. Art is the only corner I've carved for myself in which I'm able to communicate my ideas freely, flawed as they may be. And I'm not about to let the bravado of the entire internet sway me away from saying what I have to say, even if it sucks. I hope you enjoy this episode of My Futility. It's all that I have to offer at the moment. And I love that. I love that attitude, this commitment to like, look, art is a way of working things out for the artist in particular. I think people oftentimes overlook that when they're evaluating a piece of art and its place in the world is they tend to forget the value that making something has to the maker. And they only think about the value, ex external value to everyone else. And uh, when you have someone who's, I, and I didn't see anything particularly controversial in this story, but I don't, again, I don't, like he's saying, um, I'm not an expert. I don't know the situation at all that he's talking about. So like, I don't have an opinion, but to me, this was just a story about, you know, people living their lives. But if there was something in here that was, I don't know, politically kind of a hot button issue or whatever, I think it's great that he's like, hey, I'm leaning into this with the amount of information I'm able to collect given my life circumstances and the time I have. And I'm trying to process it. And this is how I processed it. And he processed it in a way that led to a really great piece of comics. It's well written. It's well cartooned. And I think that's, you know, where these kind of critiques need to stay. And like he said, it, it, he's willing to hear people's opinions. This is a way of opening a conversation. So I love that. It's a really healthy view of what humanity should be. And I think that shows up like in his writing as well. It's very humane, attentive writing to 
uh, how humans behave, how the world works and stuff like that. So I really, really enjoy these. I really, really wish I could get the earlier issues of Futile, and I will definitely be getting any new issues of anything that Mike Centeno puts out because he's a, a really stellar writer and a really stellar cartoonist. House on Fire by Matt Battaglia is a just gorgeous book where Matt's kind of making an emotional response to the, the years of COVID and wrapping that into a sci-fi dystopian future that really the sci-fi dystopians backgrounded and you're fo focused on the emotional journey of two characters in a really beautiful way. And then that's enhanced by Matt's like really awesome, loose, kind of Paul Popish um, dry brush work. And then Sh Sean and Matt have worked to get this second kind of orange spot color in there that's going to look really, really beautiful and has allowed Matt to use his dry brush technique to add tone to the thing too. So um, with Sean's production technique, this is going to be a gorgeous book with a lot of heart.